and if are in listen only mode. Hello, my name is Jan and I'm a community coach with the County Health Rankings and Roadmaps program and I'm joined by my colleague Karen. Hello, I'll be joining in to help answer questions um, and also sending out some links via the chat box throughout the webinar so you can watch for those as we go along. Great, thanks Karen. And we're excited to have Trudy Raimondo and Josh Lee with us today to talk with us about how San Bernardino County in California uses the opportunity of the rankings release and the data within the rankings to engage their community partners in working together to improve the health of all residents. So I'd like to say hello to Trudy and Josh. Hi there. Hello. Hi, thanks for the invite. Great, thanks for joining us you all. And we'll be hearing from Trudy and Josh a little bit later. First, I'd like to acknowledge the important relationship we have with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. The County Health Rankings and Roadmaps Program is a collaboration between the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the University of Wisconsin Population Health Institute. And next, we'd like to take a moment to, t to uh, get you oriented to the technology we're using today. The GoToWebinar attendee interface is made up of two parts. And on the left, you can see the viewer window, where you'll see our screen throughout the presentation. And on the right, you can see the control panel, which is where you can interact with us. So please feel free to ask questions or share your thoughts and experiences with us via the control panel throughout our webinar today. And we'll be sure to leave time uh, after we speak with Trudy and Josh for your questions. So here are our goals for today. We're hoping that today, um, this is what you're going to walk away with. You're going to have heard how one community has used county health rankings to support their health improvement efforts. And you're also going to leave with some key messages for talking about the rankings in your community. And we hope that you're going to leave also inspired to use the rankings to amplify your community health improvement efforts. We've got a question that guides our webinar today. How can we use the County Health Rankings release in our community? So we'd like to get a sense of how you've used the rankings release in the past, and we've got a, a rapid response poll for that. And Karen's putting that up for you all to see right now. And we're going to let you take a, just about a minute here. And as you're um, thinking about your answers, also we'd love to hear your examples of how you've used the rankings as a call to action in your community. So please use the chat or the question box to share with us what's worked well in your community. And be, be sure to tell us who you are, what, who your community is, so we can share that with others on the webinar. So this is both an a answer, a one at a time sort of answer, as well as an open, open question. And we're getting close to having the majority of folks having answered. We'll give you a few more moments here. OK, I'm going to count down. Three, two, one. And when I say one, we're going to close the poll. So three, two, and one. So here we go. And. So uh, it looks like 15% of you, we're going to publish with those, okay. So it looks like 15% of you um, have answered um, <laughs> and 52% um, of you uh, have looked at the data in the rankings. Another 40% have used it as an opportunity to engage uh, partners in your community and 45% of you have used the data to inform your work. And then 18% uh, have used the rankings as a call to action. And I see we also have some folks um, answering where they are um, you know, as a community, what they've done to use the rankings. And it looks like in Nashville, um, I'm just going to call you out here, Joyce, that thank you so much for sharing this with us. You've used it through the Davidson County Community Needs Assessment for the past three years. So that's awesome. And then. We've got uh, Megan saying we've used it to help uh, determine health priority needs 
for your needs assessment in 2013, and that's in Langlade Hospital, Langlade County, Wisconsin, our home state here. That's great. Uh, Kenneth, you've used the rankings to um, help your effort to promote a smoking, no smoking ordinance in Seymour. And, oh, we're getting lots here um, in Wasco. Uh, Sherman and Gilliam counties in Oregon, you've used it to inform key stakeholders. Thank you, Jane. St. Mary's County, Maryland. Oh my gosh, we have so many here, it's hard to name all of these. So um, thank you all so very much. We'll, maybe what we can do is put these into um, a handout that will go along with the chat link so you can see all of the wonderful ways that people and where people are using the rankings release. Great. So. I'm going to uh, move on to our next slide, and as we go into the content, uh, we'd like you to think about these questions. So who else do you need to share this information with? And what is one idea for action that you're taking away from this webinar? And what else do you need to know to take action and use this information? So keep these questions parked in the, the back of your mind here as we go through. So we're going to start with a, a brief program overview. We're just going to get grounded in the discussion of county health rankings and roadmaps. And this is going to take about five minutes. Um, if you're newer to us, this is going to give you a high-level overview of county health rankings and roadmaps. And if you'd like to learn more, we have a couple of ways to do that. In preparation for the rankings release on March 25th, which is coming up pretty close next week, we recently recorded two webinars. One is specifically focused on our updated measures, and another is on our methodologies. Methodology, and we're going to, Karen's going to chat out links to those recordings now. So if you have specific questions about either the uh, measures or the methodology, that's where you would go to find answers to that. This is going to be a higher level uh, webinar that we're doing today. And we're also going to be hosting a County Health Rankings and Roadmaps 101 webinar on April 7th, and that's going to include a tour of the updated website, so stay tuned for that. So let's just take this from the top. The County Health Rankings ranks the health of nearly every county in every state, and for each county, you'll find two rankings. One is for health outcomes and one's for health factors. So what you're looking at here is really the most important image. It's, it's what we base our rankings on. It's the picture of health, and it shows the relationship between policy, health factors, and health outcomes. It illustrates why it's really important for communities to take a very broad definition of health. Many, many factors impact how well and how long we live. So things like how we commute to work, housing conditions, access to parks, the quality of our schools, access to healthy foods, community safety, and our social connectedness, among other things, all impact how long and how well we live. So what does this image tell us? Starting from the bottom, we know that effective local, state, and federal policies and programs can improve a variety of factors that in turn shape the health of communities. And we specifically, in the health factors, we look at health behaviors, clinical care, social and economic factors, and the physical environment. And we measure two types of health outcomes to show how healthy each county is, length of life and quality of life. So as you know, we'll be hearing from San Bernardino shortly about how they used this model of population health as a way to reach out to new partners. We know this is very challenging work. And we know that communities sometimes want or need support to figure out the first or next steps. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the Roadmaps to Health Action Center. The take action cycle is the how within rankings and roadmaps. It lays out the process that communities can follow to improve health. So there's a series of actions. Gather information to assess your own community's needs and resources. Set priorities, what we call focus, so you can focus on what's important. Find the most effective approaches to address your priorities. That's your choose step. And then getting to work on acting on what's important based on what policies and systems and programs you want to put in place. And of course, evaluating throughout the cycle um, to help you improve your strategies and ensure that what you're doing is effective. 
And you'll see that communicate and work together sit outside the cycle because working together and communicating with stakeholders is essential throughout the whole take action cycle. And at the heart of the Take Action cycle is people working together because we know solving issues like childhood obesity, poor high school graduation rates, or crime and recidivism require the wisdom and the resources of everyone in the community. Not one person alone or one partner alone can do it. And the Roadmaps to Health Action Center includes guidance and tools to help communities keep moving along this cycle. Karen's going to be sharing some links, or has shared some links to some relevant tools to these guys, uh, and she'll do that uh, during today's webinar. And they'll also be posted online later this week. So today, we're focusing on how San Bernardino County has used the rankings in their community and how you can use the upcoming rankings release to get your message out in your community. Our discussion today will touch on several parts of the Take Action cycle, but what you'll hear most explicitly is how the rankings support efforts to assess needs and resources, to communicate, and to work together. So now let's turn to another piece of the County Health Rankings and Roadmaps. In the Action Center, we guide people to the Take Action Cycle and point them toward tools and guidance on our website to assist them in their community health improvement efforts. But we also know that many communities are already well along the way on this journey, and we wanted a way to identify and celebrate and feature these communities. So the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health Prize celebrates what communities have done as well as how they've done it. And here you'll see the six criteria that are central to the RWJF Culture of Health Prize. The prize recognizes communities annually who work across the health factors by defining health very broadly. Communities that are strategically focused on policy, systems, and environmental changes and who look out for all, including the most vulnerable in their community. These communities work collaboratively with partners from across the sectors, use, wisely, use their resources wisely and creatively, and they measure and share success widely. And you can learn more about these communities, the 2013 and 2014 prize winners on our site. Karen has chatted that out in the web address to you now. The County Health Rankings are an invaluable tool that really show us that much of what influences health happens outside of the doctor's office. It happens in our workplaces, our schools, and our neighborhoods. And as rich a resource as the rankings are, they are really only as meaningful as the action they inspire. That's the priority objective for the rankings, to galvanize communities and drive solutions-oriented action that address barriers to health. The rankings use factors that are actionable. So local leaders, community partners, and citizens can closely look at the data to pinpoint where they need to focus their efforts and then begin to work together to do so. From a communication standpoint, the rankings release is an opportunity to highlight both the data in each county, but also what's being done, what actions are happening to make health better for everyone. And the rankings give you an opportunity to provide context and highlight what efforts and initiatives and partnerships are underway to address the challenges. What's being done to expand healthier opportunities for everyone in your community? What are the local solutions you're developing, implementing, and the policies and programs you're putting into place that address these issues? Let's take a look at some of the key messages that you can use to talk about the rankings in your community. So you can use the rankings release as an opportunity to highlight both your county's data and what's being done locally. The rankings illustrate in a powerful way that where you live can influence how well and how long you live. The rankings show much of our health is connected to where you live, learn, work, and play. And the rankings make it possible for communities to see the health problems they face and create local solutions to address them. So these are key messages to take out to your community. The county health rankings show how we're, we're doing and where we can improve our health. And the roadmaps offer communities resources and tools to move from education and awareness to action. A culture of health requires breaking down traditional silos and engaging with new partners to achieve a common goal, better health for all, regardless of where they live, how much they make, or where they come from. 
So again, moving from education and awareness to action is the key. One of the things we've been particularly excited about in the evolution of the rankings is how there are so many more messengers from different sectors who better understand how what they do connects to health. And you'll hear this when we talk with Trudy and Josh later. The rankings make it clear that health is the intersection of multiple factors across many fields, disciplines, and professions. Not only public health, public health institutes, and hospitals, and local health departments, but also transportation, housing, education, business, law enforcement, and, and so many more. It's really been a great framework to broaden the notion of what impacts health. The rankings release is a great time for your spokespeople to share how different sectors are being engaged in your community's health improvement efforts. Health is something where we all own the outcome, and your representatives should talk about breaking down traditional silos and inviting a diversity of expertise, experience, and perspectives to the table to create a shared vision of health and health improvement. So here are some ways you can get involved in the March 25th County Health Rankings release. And Karen is chatting out a tool right now that you can use to write an opinion uh, editorial for your local, pop, um, local publications. And if you'd like help thinking about press releases or preparing for the rankings release, you can contact us through the Get Help button on our site. And um, you can come to countyhealthrankings.org for other tools and resources. So now we're going to turn to our guests from San Bernardino County, California. And we're going to hear from them about how they use the rankings release to really engage with their partners and, and break down silos and take local action. So I'd like to introduce our guests. Um, I'd like to start with Trudy Ramondo, who is the director of San Bernardino County's Department of Public Health. And she has proudly served the county of San Bernardino since 1990 and has been with public health since 1997. She was appointed as public health director in 2012 and continues to forge a new path for the department, one steeped in deliberate collaboration with the community with an eye toward the future and a focus on improving the health and well-being of all county residents. Most recently, she spearheaded Community Vital Signs, a community-led effort in partnership with the county. County. Community Vital Signs is intended to build a health improvement framework focused on data-driven, multi-sectoral approaches to achieve collective impact. And Trudy is joined by Josh Lee, a senior planner with San Bernardino Associated Governments, also known as SANBAG, which is a county transportation commission and a council of governments. He has a background in land use and transportation planning with emphasis on regional plans, general plans, and active transportation plans. He has managed projects such as the Riverside County Healthy Communities Element, San Bernardino County Regional Greenhouse Reduction Plan, and Sandbag's Non-Motorized Transportation Plan. He is currently serving as a committee member of the San Bernardino County Active Transportation Network and Community Vital Signs. Welcome, Trudy and Josh. Hello. So, hello, thank you, Karen and Jan, and hello from San Bernardino County. Um, as you can see, San Bernardino County in our region um, is actually often referred to as the heart of Southern California. Uh, what makes our community unique is that we have a population of well over 2 million residents, um, and actually more than 50% of our population is Hispanic. Um, we are we are an incredibly diverse community, and with over 2 million residents, we're actually larger than about 15 states. Uh, our expansive geography, as I'll talk about later, and kind of the affordable nature of our housing and economy uh, has us actually expected to grow in population to about 2.7 million by 2035. Geographically, we stand at over 20,000 square miles. Um, which makes us the largest county in the United States. And with such an expansive region, we're actually divided into three areas. Uh, we have an expansive desert region. Um, as you can see from the picture, we have an incredible mountain region, and we have incredibly urban central areas. Uh, 
we have, so we have such an expansive map, more than 80% of county is actually undeveloped. That is one huge county. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Trudy. Yeah, I think about Wisconsin, and we would fit in one small part of San Bernardino. <laughs> so can you talk about how you've built the rankings data and the model into your community health assessment in San Bernardino, please? Of course. Um, I think one of the things, though, I'd like to start out is use the rankings data and model uh, to create a real sense of urgency in your community. Uh, use it as a way to look at kind of where you stand um, amongst the other counties. Uh, how do you compare? Uh, look at it in terms of what are some of the issues uh, that you may need to address and areas where you may be improving. Um, but I say that um, with a little bit of caution because I think you really need to only do that initially uh, to create that sense of awareness. And I can talk about that a little more later. Um, in San Bernardino, we've actually used the health rankings model so as part of our community health assessment process. Um, I think too often what I've seen in public health and with a lot of my colleagues in the healthcare field is that we forget about all of those other environmental and social factors that play a role in one's health. So by using the rankings, it really allows you to introduce all of those other determinants, as you saw, into your assessment. It really gives you an opportunity to dive down into what are some of the root causes behind the health and wellness issues in your community. Um, but I would also say, you know, don't be afraid to complement the data and the metrics that are being made available through the rankings. Um, make sure you're picking things that are truly relevant for your unique community. Uh, in San Bernardino, especially, we were very intentional when we started looking at our community health assessment process and the metrics we were using through that, that process, uh, we were very intentional about bringing our local area hospitals to the table. I think for all intents, everyone is realizing that we all have, this, we all have the same requirements. Um, we all have the same goals. And so for us, it was really about, well, if we need to accomplish the same thing, why aren't we doing this together? Uh, why aren't we leveraging the resources uh, that we've got? And so what we discovered by bringing our hospital partners to the table is that a lot of things that we were looking at, a lot of the metrics we were helping to assess, they were aligned. We wanted to look at the same thing. Um, I think the other piece of it, too, is we also found the, found the value um, in metrics that we may not have realized uh, we should be looking at. Uh, I think the other piece of it, too, is really um, we, it, opened up to, it opened us up to not just looking at some very traditional health data, but really we started to look at a lot of the quality of life measures that the rankings really show are critical to our community's health. So in San Bernardino, um, we also dug deep into the rankings. Um, I think, as you can see, with such a diverse community, um, with such diversity in our geography, we couldn't take a cookie-cutter approach uh, to our metrics and our data. So what we did was we actually went out into the different communities and started to ask them, what is the story? Um, what is the story behind this data? And in order for us to do that, we needed to make sure that we picked data points that we could drive down to a city or zip code level. Because we knew from community to community, from culture to culture, from geography to geography, folks were going to have a different priority. Folks were going to have a different focus. Um, we also wanted to make sure that we didn't linger on each of the numbers too long. Um, I think really our focus was rather than asking, we rather asked what was a unique story behind each data point. We wanted to know from the community why they thought a number was what it was. We wanted to know how their community was different. And we wanted to know how those differences really played into the metrics that we were already discussing. Um, honestly, it was 
it was a way for us to be able to take a very simple number and translate it into a meaningful story that was relevant to each community. One thing that I really uh, enjoyed out of the process is when you are able to dig deep into a lot of the rankings um, and you make them relevant for each community, you have an incredible opportunity to engage your elected officials. Elected officials, they want to know what's happening to their constituents. Elected officials want to know what's happening uniquely in their communities. And, and in San Bernardino, we took full advantage of that. Uh, we gave them data that was specific to either the cities or zip codes uh, that they have jurisdiction over. Um, and we made it meaningful to them. But we also engaged them in the process. Uh, elected officials are, can be incredible champions, and they have incredible expertise in their community. So when we were digging deeper into the numbers, we asked them, who should we be inviting to the table? They knew who their stakeholders were. Uh, they knew who should be at the table. And so we leveraged their expertise and their knowledge. We asked them, who should we invite? And we even got to the point of asking them, where should we be holding all of our events? Um, I think really when it came to our electeds, they can be your champions. Make them your champions during any of your community engagement efforts. Uh, they were there for us during all of the planning. They were there by our side, and they were fully engaged through the entire thing. And Trudy, um, I'm hearing you say were, but I know it's also ongoing. This is an ongoing partnership that you've engaged with them. Um, and so I, I, you've described this so beautifully, how you've used the, the rankings and the measures underneath to pivot down into local stories and what's true locally. And I want to, um, actually I want to come back to the question of using the rankings as a call to action and a starting point for the conversation. You did a beautiful job explaining that. But can you tell us a little bit more about how you made the most of any given rankings released to start the conversation in San Bernardino, just as a starting place? A lot of folks that are on the webinar uh, just want to know how to start. We did. And, and really, we used the rankings, um, again, to create that sense of urgency. Um, we looked at it very quickly because I think initially, you know, you look at it to compare your county to others. Uh, you look at it to quickly identify, oh, where have we gone up? Have we gone up? Have we gone down? Uh, where have we made improvements? What are some of the issues that we may still be looking at? Um, but if I may, I would really uh, caution folks in that respect. You know, use it to create that sense of urgency. Um, but I think it's important to quickly pivot the conversation because what you want to do is really get into the story behind the numbers. Um, I think if you focus too long and focus solely on a number, that number may not mean the same thing to everybody. And I think it can be incredibly paralyzing. I think when you get into the story uh, is when you discover that people can start to come with ideas. Uh, as an example, when we finally asked about, when we went to the communities to ask them, why do you think this number is what it is, they came back with ideas behind, well, we think it's our poverty status. Um, we think it's because we don't have enough access to fresh food. Um, we discovered that perceptions of crime uh, were one of the issues because they had access to parks and bikeways. Uh, but unfortunately didn't feel safe in them. So it really drove down into the story behind the number. And from there, we really were then able to discover, well, who are the other partners then we should be talking to? Uh, it opened up that table to, we're not going to deal with this from our traditional standpoint of public health, uh, but we're going to look at it from what are those other issues? And I think, you know, quite honestly, um, when we went into the community and started asking them about the story, what we discovered was there are a lot of common ideas, but there are also some very common understandings of what the issue was. And by really developing a common agenda or a common understanding of what the issue is, I think it naturally then drives us to developing 
some common solutions, and those common solutions often involve bringing other partners to the table. And so at this point, I think, you know, I would like to introduce my colleague here, Josh, because it was really in transportation and planning um, where some common solutions were developed. Thank you, Trudy. So basically, we looked at, from the built environment sector, uh, the rankings, and we, you know, we, we didn't really focus on the actual numbers. Numbers were quite dismal for the San Bernardino County, but we wanted to focus on what actual impact um, did the rankings have on our community, um, and especially um, what impact did the built environment sector have um, on public health and the community for, and, and the community members. So when we looked at our sector, uh, we first looked at the rankings and and kind of had that aha moment. Um, that realization that we played a role um, in, in uh, determining one's health. Um, as Jan kind of shared in the previous slides, um, the model shows that shows what the role of uh, different sectors play uh, in determining um, health, and you know that's we, we commonly know that as the social determinants of health. And built environment definitely plays a role. You know, um, we also develop messaging tools out of it saying that decisions in the transportation and planning sector has a direct and sometimes indirect and positive, which means we also have negative impacts um, on the choices that people make on their individual health. So that messaging basically came out of the action center that Jen also shared. So the, built, so the realization of built environment um, plays a role in, 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 in some of these sectors, kind of uh, some of these um, outcomes show that um, we were, we were in it. Uh, we, we, we were good partners. We, we needed to be partners. We needed to find that, as Trudy said, the commonality. And when we looked at it, we, we, we began to realize that some of our infrastructure decisions that we make, some of policy decisions that we, we make, um, play a role in not just in the physical environment um, part, but also play a role in diet and exercise with trails and open space and park and, um, and habitat preservation um, efforts. We also play a role in education. We realize that some of our, our work effort in Safe House of School and some of our work efforts in um, air quality um, has a heavy, heavy impact on, on some of the educational um, policies. And, and of course, we also play a, um, we talked about perception of the safety. Um, a lot of the infrastructure that we build um, brings that, brings about those perception of the safety realm. And of course, the physical environment, as we mentioned. So the key is that the ranking allowed us to look at the health uh, from so many other lenses than our, you know, how we typically look at it through the healthcare lens. The model was an eye-opening tool for us, um, and it helped us to realize that we played a significant role um, in determining public health. So therefore, we, um, if we know, so we went back and said, therefore, if we know that we have an influence over people's decisions, people's health decisions then what we do in our work effort should work to bring positive changes. Thank you, Josh. That's, that's so helpful to hear how you've positioned, and it was this big aha um, for you, and which also became an aha for others. And it sounds like you've used the, the rankings model quite a bit as a messaging tool. Can you talk a little bit about how that worked for you specifically? Sure. Um, yes, we, we've definitely used the aha moment as a tool to develop the messaging. Uh, we did not just have the aha moment, but we actually went back and actually looked at how we are approaching um, our sector in, in terms of our actions, action items, and our work efforts. Um, as if, you know, as the approach to the ranking suggests, uh, you know, we review the policies and programs that we had. Um, internally, we looked at incorporating health into our sustainability working paper. Um, and this, this is important because, um, you know, we found that commonality. Uh, you know, in transportation built environment sector, we work, on, we work under the umbrella of sustainability a lot. And that's definitely the kind of the trend in the uh, built environment sector. And we found that commonality with public health under the, um, under the umbrella of sustainability. You know, there, there are quite a bit of overlap between goals of the sustainability and health. So, um, you know, this allowed us to incorporate elements um, of improving health in our, um, basically, MOU with our um, MPO SCAG on, you know, implementing the region's um, sustainable, sustainable community strategies. 
Uh, we also looked at elements of um, um, improving our main active translation documents that we have, uh, a lot of the policies that are built into that document, um, and also infrastructure that we're building um, through that document. So, you know, after our initial, initial review of the policies and programs, we began to kind of incorporate public health. Um, and we moved on to um, realizing some of the low-hanging fruits, and we started picking off from the low-hanging fruits after that. So here's a slide of some of the low-hanging fruits that we um, we picked. You know, um, um, the picture is a um, uh, is a mayor of um, Real city of Rialto. Her name is uh, Deborah Robertson. Um, and one of the low-hanging fruits um, that we picked was basically, as Trudy mentioned, um, we engaged the elected officials. And we were fortunate enough to have an elected official that also had that same aha moment for our sector, basically. Um, that she, she knew that built environment policies, built environment infrastructure impacted um, communities' health. So we were able to partner with public health and use um, one of the tools in the action, um, uh, tools of action um, called one-on-one -on -one tool and just approached her. And we engaged her, and we received commitments from her, uh, basically being our county's um, built environment health champion. And she immediately went to work, actually. Uh, she started influencing all the policies and, and decisions uh, from the elected side on, on supporting a lot of the work programs that we have under sustainability as well as public health. health, health. Um, and you know, partnering, partnering with public health also resulted in a lot of um, smaller um, but important um, low-hanging fruits as well. We, we sought, sought out we, um, uh, funding for active translation plans, infrastructure projects, and then, out, and then expanding our transit network in the county with our first BRT system, bus rapid transit system, and also developing health indicators um, basically re related to built, uh, built environment um, that impacts health so that we can actually model and track um, uh, some, of, some of our work efforts in relation to um, indicators of public health. So these are some of the work efforts that can only start uh, with the realization that we have a role to play in shaping health. And that, start, that, and that conversation started, and that work effort has started in our county. Wow. Thanks, Josh. That's great. So for both of you, Trudy and Josh, um, in summary, you've talked about how you've used the rankings as a call to action and a starting point for the conversation. Uh, you've done that through sharing not just the numbers, but the whole model of population health underneath the numbers, the, the many factors contributing to health. Uh, you've done that through sharing the data with community members and partners to get them talking about their stories and where they align, and from there, identifying the causes which can lead to solutions. And this has, in turn, led to a shared ownership of health that's spreading throughout San Bernardino County. So turning now to media, um, how have you made the most of the rankings released to engage local media in San Bernardino's work? So as far as the media, we really have used the rankings um, to be able to highlight the positive things that are actually going on in San Bernardino. Um, I think, you know, when the rankings first come out, um, I think too often the media and even the public itself, uh, they get fixated on the numbers. Um, and as we've discovered, numbers can mean different things to different people. Um, it's hard to truly understand a number. So what we've done, rather, is actually used it as a way to highlight all of the positive things that are going on in San Bernardino. We like to use it as what we call a pivot. We pivot that conversation. So we talk about all the work that we've done. Uh, we talk about all of the work that we're currently undergoing. Um, we talk about it, uh, we use it as a way to talk about all of the incredible partnerships that we've built. Um, but I think also one of, the, with a, one of the great benefits of highlighting the positives is that you really open up some avenues for others to join you in the effort. Right, and, and just like transportation uh, and planning um, the built environment sector, there were other sectors that had that same type of our moment, and they joined in because of um, the messaging that was developed from the rankings. That's awesome. Thanks, y'all. 
So in wrapping up this section um, of talking with you all, could you just share with us some of the lessons that you've learned along the way? I think communities always find that helpful to learn from other communities. So I would suggest um, timeliness. Timeliness is key. You really use the rankings as an opportunity to create that sense of urgency and to start the conversation. Um, but also use the rankings as a way so you can start digging deep. It gives you an opportunity to really go into your communities and ask them, what is the story? What is the story behind your number? Yeah, and it also brings the conversation to other sectors, um, just like what Trudy did with our sector. Um, she's continuing to do that with um, public safety, education sector. Um, you know, I, I'm the only one here today, but in the uh, community vital science group, there are other multiple sectors that are engaged in this. And they have the exact same aha moment um, that they played a significant part and role um, in improving health of the community. So that it basically allowing the sectors to tell their own story to this. And use it. Use it as a way to tell your entire community and all of your sectors, we're in this together. Um, I like to say my new mantra is public health and even healthcare doesn't own health. It has to be a sense of shared ownership. Everybody, everything is interrelated. Everything is interdependent. And looking at that rankings model is a great way to emphasize that. Great. Thank you both so much. Um, so now what we're going to do is turn to, well, we'll turn back to the slide we started with um, for uh, those of you on the, the webinar, and, and think again of these reflection questions. We started with these, you know, what else do you need to know to take action, to use this information? And we have been getting some questions along the way. Um, so Trudy and Josh, if you're ready, we're going to tee those up for you, and Karen's got these questions for you. Sure. Thanks, Jan, and uh, thanks so much, Trudy and Josh. That's this has just been really, really helpful. And <clears throat> I want to note that along the way, folks have been um, sharing um, some of their own experience with the rankings, and I want to just kind of give you a couple of couple highlights from that. <clears throat> We've had folks. Um, talk about using the rankings as part of their master's level coursework and I think that's both from curriculum point of view and from um, doing your you know course projects and then also using the rankings to inform some mental health work in a community what kind of uh, what the data shows and then also what kind of strategies they can use to to address some of the concerns in their community in Tompkins County, New York, um, we hear we heard from someone there talking about how they've used the the compare county feature on the rankings site to actually look at how their county compares to others in their state. Um, and then in Douglas County, Oregon, we heard from someone there talking about how they've really been able to use the rankings and the data within the rankings to serve as a call to action to really bring in, and I think this is what we're hearing from Trudy and Josh too, to really bring in those partners who are doing work in, in social determinants. So thank you so much for sharing your experiences and um, how you've been using the rankings in your community, and, and please do feel free to continue to share those. Along the way, we've also gotten questions. So let's turn to some of your questions. Um, Trudy and Josh, can you talk a little bit about what kind of grant funding opportunities you maybe have come across um, or been successful with as a result of, of using the county health rankings and roadmaps in your efforts in San Bernardino County? How, have, how has that helped leverage you to um, to make the most of re new resources and, and existing resources? Sure, I, I can take that question. Um, so in terms of funding, um, you know, as government officials, we have to talk about funding and where the money's coming from all the time. Um, and so one of the success story out of this um, is that through our partnership um, and the realization of built environment having a great impact on public health uh, when it comes to active translation especially, um, so in, in the state of California, we have what's called um, Active Translation Program. It's a grant fund that actually supports um, building of active translation plans as well as a lot of the infrastructure related to active translation programs. And um, this year, with, for, the, for cycle one, we were able to leverage uh, more than $23 million uh, in funding for our county. Um, a lot of our jurisdictions, it, 
uh, traditionally did not even apply for um, a lot of the bike pet projects. But this time around, uh, we partnered with uh, public health with, as well as other sectors to, uh, to really engage the uh, city's jurisdictions to um, go ahead and apply for the active transportation program and start leveraging funds through the story that they tell um, through, the, uh, through the public health. Um, so I think with that in itself um, have leveraged all those funding that we got this year for, uh, for last year, um, more than $23 million worth of funds. And if I could, I think uh, using the county health rankings model um, really gives you an incredible opportunity to leverage perhaps some non-financial resources. Um, using the health rankings model really kind of opened my eyes and I was able to approach some of the other sectors and say, what are your priorities? Where are you trying to get to? What are your goals? And what we discovered is in a lot of areas and in a lot of situations, we have the same goals. What we discovered is we were actually trying to get to the same place, but we were doing it in isolation. So I really would emphasize looking at the, look at the rankings model be able to leverage existing efforts. Um, that's something that we're doing right now is looking at all of the various initiatives and, and resources going on in the county and it's about building upon what you may already have and, and better using them more in alignment and strategically because I think what, you, what you'll discover is that for a lot of the sectors the goals are the same. That's fantastic. Thank you both so much. Um, uh, one other question, we've, we've talked a little bit about, or a lot throughout today's webinar, about um, the built environment piece and, and bringing that work more clearly into the conversation about health. Tracy is wondering about what, what specific indicators related to the built environment have you looked at in your community? Sure. Um, so we have some modeling effort that's going on um, to kind of track the uh, progress of what um, what we're what our work effort um, is like, um, we in conjunction with our MPO SCAG, uh, we're developing um, some of the land use impacts on public health. So we're right now it's at, it's at the infant stage where we're kind of looking at the indicators exactly what indicators we need to track, um, so that so that we know uh, we're making a progress on it. So one thing that that's kind of clear is that you, we don't, we're not using the rankings model as the indicator. We're not using the rankings model as our um, tool to kind of measure our progress. Um, we're, we have a separate um, effort going on um, in our county. We're, try, we're trying to gather um, information on health, like the, obes the, the obvious ones are ob uh, like the obesity factors and asthma factors. So some of those things, efforts are in, in the works, but it's, it, it's, it's at the beginning stage where kind of, we're kind of at this point where we're determining um, some of those um, indicators and elements. That's great. Thanks so much, Josh. And I think it's it's a really important point to um, to make about looking for the the indicators and the measures that really are most meaningful to your community and will allow you to see what kind of progress you're making over time. So I think that's a really great point. Thank you for for raising it. Um, <clears throat> we had another question about, and we've we've touched on this, but let's just kind of come back and 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 zero in on this point a little bit. How do you explain the county health rankings in a meaningful way when what community members may be seeing on a day-to-day -day basis doesn't really align with either the ranking or the particular data point that you're looking at? How are you engaging folks um, in the rankings if, if, like a, if, as this person says, it's not really uh, resonating with them on it, what they're seeing day-to-day? -day? Well, I think um, there are two ways to address it. Um, I think number one, you really need to go back to that model and kind of em emphasize the, the intersection and the interrelatedness of all of those things because it may be something completely different that may be affecting uh, the number as it stands. Um, I think the other piece of it though is if you have a community that's saying that's questioning that number, they're saying, you know, this number doesn't make sense to me, Ask them why. Um, what you may discover, for example, um, in terms of tobacco rates, and you have a community saying, you know, this, this tobacco rate doesn't make sense to me. It's, it's not what I'm seeing day to day in my community. 
um, by asking them why, you may discover that that particular community uh, may have developed and implemented some incredible no smoking open space policies. They really have uh, may have implemented some incredible things in their community that would be an incredible opportunity for you to share with your other communities. It could be something that you could then take back and scale to the county. So I think it's important to really ask them why, because the shared learning opportunity is incredible in that respect. And I, I, and I think this is kind of important in that um, when public health approached this, um, they, they didn't approach, approach us or each of the sectors in, in the community vital science in a way that they want to dictate what public health policies we needed, we needed to have. I think they, they kind of came, came to us and asked us and asked each of the sectors to come up with our own story, come up with our own measures, come up with our own way of dealing with the issues that are related to public health. Great. Thank you both so much. Um, we have a question here about <clears throat> how have you partnered with cities um, in, when there's a, a mix of county and city land and engaging community members and leaders to improve land use? I know you, you mentioned um, about land use in the community, and I, and I know that you have a very diverse community with lots of different cities, lots of different communities that make up your county. Can you just talk a little bit about how that partnership has worked um, in, in and across your county? Yeah, um, so we actually have 24 incorporated areas in our county, which, you, which is quite a bit. So it makes us unique. Um, and so but what that did was gave us a real great opportunity to start to look at what is the definition of a healthy community. And so what we've really done is uh, set aside some uh, toolbox ideas, some technical assistance, uh, to the point where we now have 23 of our 24 cities um, having developed and or implemented some form of healthy city initiative. Um, and really that's how we've been able to work with the cities is we've used the rankings to show them it's not just about the public health department. It's not just about the hospital uh, sitting within your particular city jurisdiction. Uh, there are so many areas that as a local jurisdiction, you have policy authority over. And so it's giving them those ideas. It was, it was first the aha moments of much of what we can do to affect our community's health, uh, we have authority over whether it's for transportation, whether it's for planning, whether it's how we work with our educational institutions. Um, it talks about, you know, it, it can be, you know, how do we work with our public safety sector? But there were so many things that they realized they had authority over, and then it was giving them those scalable ideas. Um, you know, we came up with a nice toolbox and, toolbox and some technical assistance to say, these are some, some of the ideas. Take what makes sense for you, because we knew not everything was going to make sense for every city. Another thing is for for the at least for the built environment um, section, um, Sandbag doesn't have a land use authority. It's the cities that are in charge of actual land use, as well as some of the transportation projects. So um, messaging was the key to some of our um, success. As I, as I mentioned, the ATP, um, it's both. Um, having sandbag um, allow um, the messaging and the um, messaging to be out there for the cities to take advantage of, as well as um, you know state coming up with uh, incentives um, like the active transportation program to kind of um, push and nudge the cities um, to think in this way. But again, um, the, it, the the aha moment kind of has to come from within. Um, we can't make cities do something. Um, it, it, so a lot of um, Trudy's effort with healthy communities, as well as our, our effort in terms of pushing for some of the active translation and other built environment policies, um, the, the messaging has to resonate and they have to realize that and the cities have to then um, really act upon it. 
Um, well, Trudy and Josh, you two are fabulous. <laughs> it's so great to have you on this <laughs> webinar because you are a great example of what we mean when we talk about using the rankings as a place to start the conversation and mobilize community action. And oh my gosh, you're doing it across such a large expanse of many, many, many communities. And it sounds like you know a lot of it is about inviting people into the conversation and asking more than telling. And um, I just really want to thank you so much, and so does Karen here, for uh, taking the time to talk with us today and all of us here at uh, County Health Rankings and Roadmaps and for sharing your experience uh, with us about San Bernardino County and your, how you're using the rankings release. So thank you so very much. I'm going to now move into some... Um, summary and close and, and as we wrap up we want to let you know that thanks to the support of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation we have 11 community coaches across the nation and our assistance is available at no cost to you thanks to RWJF. Our community coaches provide community leaders with direct support to strengthen your capacity to advance health improvement efforts in your communities and our coaches use the County Health Rankings model, the Take Action Cycle, and the RWJF Culture of Health Prize Criteria as the framework for their guidance. And what works for health is a database of evidence-rated strategies, and the Action Center content are, include practical tools that community members and coaches can use to move from planning into action. And you'll find these orange boxes located throughout the Action Center, inviting you to contact us for personalized uh, no cost help and this is the best way to connect with one of our community coaches so please don't hesitate to contact our coaches if you need assistance with a tool, a question or just figuring out the next step in your process. And please use social media to stay in touch with and communicate about county health rankings and roadmaps. You can use Twitter, uh, like our Facebook page, and um, of course sign up to be on our e-newsletter so you can learn more about what's upcoming. And this program is the result of the contributions of many partners, including those listed here. We have quite a team. And so I want to end with, um, with this guiding question again because at the beginning of the webinar we introduced this and we, we hope that this discussion um, with Trudy and Josh and with laying the groundwork for how to use the rankings release again this year, we hope it's generated some new ideas and, and new thoughts about how you can engage um, people in your community and across sectors to build a culture of health wherever you are. And thank you all so very much. Have a great week. Bye-bye.